So before we dive into how do you move to performance engineering, uh, let's level set. Um, let's understand what is performance testing and engineering and then we'll go about it. So performance testing is basically you are ensuring that the quality of uh, your software is reliable. Uh, it's responsive and it is able to take up the expected load in the production. There is only fixed set of activities you would do uh, right from gathering the requirements to uh, creating the strategy, designing, executing and analysis. And uh, at the end, probably you will do some benchmarking, maybe some recommendations and that's it. Uh, you will be out of it. So this is a regular a performance testing cycle. Um, let's look into how performance engineering is different from this. But when we talk about engineering here, we are not talking only about uh, testing a component. Uh, usually in testing, we start um, at the end of life cycle. Uh, you might have seen that uh, when the development is done, unit testing is completed. Uh, the system is stable, code is stable, then only you'll get for performance testing. Uh, if you find any issues, any bugs related to performance, then it has to go back to additional tweaks and tuning. Then it is going to cost uh, even more time and effort to fix them and to retest. So the cycle is going to be uh, really tedious and uh, the, the time for deploying these uh, applications into production is going to increase. So engineering does come handy in these areas where actually what you would do is instead of just testing it or getting into uh, the testing at the later stage of the SDLC, you will be involved in each and every phase of the software development. Um, you can do some level of shift left testing. You can also do shift right testing. And also while the application is getting designed and it is getting created, um, then also a performance engineer would uh, get involved, start giving the inputs, uh, try to design uh, the architecture and application more suitable to uh, achieving the performance metric as well. Here you will not be uh, ending your work with providing the results or recommendations. Um, this is where engineer would actually try to go and dig into the code and try to analyze where exactly the performance bottlenecks are and to some greater extent also try to resolve it. Uh, you can definitely involve dev team into it and you can have a, a conversation with them and collectively do it but the direction is you would find the issues uh, you would identify where the performance uh, issues are you will analyze it by yourself and you will also try to fix it by yourself and retest it so that way what you're really doing is uh, you are taking care of the performance completely instead of not relying on dev team or any other teams and you're enhancing the system performance, you will have a full control. And also the time to deploy these uh, software into production will be much faster. Uh, we will talk about the exact concepts um, on how you can do the engineering uh, in, the, in the future slides. But just as a definition, this is how it differs. Now let's also look into some responsibility wise, how it differs. As you can see in the first section in performance testing, basically you are reviewing some questionnaires, um, you, you're doing some team meetings and uh, trying to figure out what are all the uh, non-functional objectives. Uh, you will be defining the test plan, confirming the scope and you will be writing some uh, test plan accordingly. And then you will design your script, you will do parameterization, you will develop the script, you will, you will do all your executions and finally you will execute, collect some performance metric, share your results and uh, you sign off from your performance testing side if there are any bugs or any further changes needs to be done, you will send it back to them. So this is where performance testing area uh, normally ends. Uh, in engineering, it is, it's much more in detail. As you can see, uh, the, the analysis part take place at the test data and identifying the bottlenecks and also outlining some recommendations from your side and some places you're also going and doing the fixes by, by yourself also. And even when it comes to tuning, you will be tuning at multiple layers, as you would know, Performance issue can happen at any layer, right from network till database. There are multiple components involved. It could be having uh, issues in a web server, application server, database, any hardware. Uh, you will be in a position or you should be in a position to tune at any level. So your tuning capacity will come here. And your deliverables will also change slightly. Um, Beyond performance testing reports, you will document specific uh, metrics which you have collected. It's also known as KPI, key performance metrics, and also what tuning changes you have done. So 
you will be doing performance testing as basic but you will also be doing engineering activity where you will go much beyond performance testing and trying to ensure the application is performance efficient so usually uh, first five to eight years i have seen uh, uh, the new resources are into performance testing zone and slowly they move into performance engineering as as on they gain more experience in their projects so now that we know how these two differs um, there are plenty of tools and techniques uh, there's performance engineering doesn't really confine to any specific concept or a tool uh, it, it is more specific on the application you are using so each and every application is different these days with the introduction of cloud uh, the architecture of the applications are changing a lot uh, with docker and kubernetes and pods and uh, database clusters so the entire landscape is changing um, even with microservices so when you have something like this uh, engineering concept doesn't really confine to uh, any specific set of tools and concept so it's basically a broader set of applications where you have to take care of performance fixes um, beyond testing area so today um, we're going to talk on six of the concepts uh, which falls under performance engineering so whoever is new to this uh, definitely will get some idea on how to go about it so the path is definitely in front of you uh, you will be moving more towards uh, owning the application versus testing it so the name itself differs as you can see testing versus engineering here you are actually engineering an application versus just testing it um, some concept we're going to introduce you um, so that you will be able to start looking into it and start utilizing them in your projects. So the first uh, concept I would like to talk about is a workload model. Um, workload model is something we normally build even in testing as well, uh, the scenarios which we build. The workload model really forms a base of your performance testing. Uh, if you have not done the modeling correctly, um, then it is going to result in a bad performance metric or you might be testing with the wrong uh, expectations. So then then the entire result may not be accurate. So the workload model, I would really like to mention that uh, spend time on analyzing the functionality or uh, never go with the same specific think time across, uh, at least have it randomized or if you can get the exact numbers even good or do the production load analysis you should be able to understand if your production uh, if your application is already in production uh, how the usage is happening try to derive workload model from it so that is going to help you to build a very strong performance testing uh, uh, execution case and that will form a base of all your future fixes or troubleshooting the second concept I would like to uh, bring it up is a Dynatrace or profiling tool. Uh, we have multiple profiling tools, um, be it Splunk or uh, be it Elastic APM. Um, Dynatrace is one big layer. So what really profiling tool does is it goes beyond regular monitoring. Um, if in performance testing, you'll be monitoring CPU memory, uh, trying to understand, uh, trying to analyze the server utilizations and uh, you will be documenting that. But Profiling tool is something where agents are normally installed on your servers. They keep track of each and every traffic which is going through. And here you will be able to use a drill down where you can actually uh, go specific into any, any request uh, and also drill down at the method level, at the code level and try to figure out which SQL query was running, uh, which, which exact method took more time. So these tools will help you uh, to pinpoint exactly where the issues are. So once you have that in front of you, then it will be much more easier to have a conversation with your dev team or for you to come up with the fixes it needs to be done. So the third concept is shift left testing. Um, uh, I have made a previous video on this specifically. Uh, you can refer to it as well. So the link is in the description. So shift left testing is basically even before the development is completely done, uh, unit testing is uh, done, you go in and try to analyze as they, as they build the components uh, using a tool like Lighthouse, you should be able to uh, build a report uh, for a single user performance where you can analyze um, what are the components which are taking more time to load. You can give a continuous feedback in the beginning itself. Uh, imagine a situation if the SLA is five seconds and uh, for one user uh, the, the component which are built out is taking 10 seconds and there is no way you will be able to meet uh, the load 
uh, performance testing SLA, right? So then it's good to do it at the very early level. Uh, Lighthouse is one such tool you can use and do it directly from the dev tools. Uh, it doesn't require you to create any script or much of a technical knowledge here. <laughs> you will also get a very detailed report and also the suggestions what needs to be fixed. So you can use this and uh, use it for your advantage for shift left testing. The fourth tool we are going to talk about is uh, AWR report analysis. AWR stands for Automatic Workload Repository. If you have a Oracle database, so whenever you're running a test, there'll be a lot of SQL query transactions happening, especially when you're running with hundreds of users, uh, the queries will be executing so many uh, iterations. So using this report, uh, the reports get normally generated. Uh, using this, you'll be able to analyze exactly uh, ordered by CPU or an elapsed time. You can figure out which SQL queries are taking a lot of time uh, through which you will be able to come up with uh, the fixes and try to implement them. So this will help you to analyze the queries and uh, come up with performance tuning opportunities. And the fifth concept is SQL query tuning. Uh, majority of our work or our requests do have some level of SQL query which get executed. So it's really important for you to understand how the SQL query works and how it is built out. If you figure out any SQL query is taking a lot of time, um, it is very critical for you to uh, come up with an alternative query which can run more quickly. Uh, sometimes I've seen SQL queries uh, do get executed thousands of times uh, based on the business logic. Um, so then even if you save half a second or milliseconds worth of uh, time in SQL queries, then it adds up the entire application will be very fast. So usually even in SQL query, each query is different. It is built on a very different level. So uh, there is no fixed uh, set of uh, query tuning uh, suggestions, but there are some basic or a very uh, rule of a thumb SQL query tuning tips. Uh, a few of them are adding any missing indexes or uh, instead of uh, searching, if doing a select star, you can do a select fields specifically. Uh, so that's going to help you and few more options as you can see on the screen right now. The last concept we're going to talk about is uh, the GC heap thread dump analysis. Um, specifically, we want to touch on the thread dump analysis inside today. So you would have definitely heard about uh, multi-threading uh, in your application. If you're running any bad jobs, if you're running any processes, uh, you would have come across this term multi-threading. So it's parallelly uh, processing of the request. It makes the processing much more faster. So what happens is uh, these threads sometimes are dependent on each other. Uh, these threads have a specific state. The lifecycle starts from new, then it will be in runnable state. Sometimes it will be on the waiting state uh, for some other process to get completed. And sometimes it will be in the blocked state. So what really happens is um, when you take out the thread dump, you will be able to analyze how these threads are behaving, how much time they are spending being uh, in a waiting or were they blocked. Because of this, it's going to impact the overall application performance. Uh, there's an easier way to do the analysis. Uh, you can export your thread dump details into a text file and you can um, upload it into a fast thread website. Uh, you can just uh, attach as a file and let it uh, analyze it. That will give you an exactly an overview and also analysis of it that will help you to figure out how the thread dump is behaving. So as I said, uh, there are multiple performance engineering concepts out there. Uh, these are all something which very basically been used across. So probably start with this. If it is applicable to you, uh, try to go and uh, do more reading on this. Feel free to reach out to me if you want some more uh, additional information. Um, I hope this was good enough for you to kickstart your performance engineering journey or a thought around that thing. I just wanted to share one fun fact. Uh, this is going to be helpful for you. Uh, Zipia is one uh, career expert website. Um, they compiled a result for whoever is claiming to be a performance engineer. Um, they, they identify the keywords which they are using in their resume and they have ranked it among the top 10. As you can see, these are all some keywords a performance engineer is using as of today. Uh, if you do not have any one of these, uh, try to add it in your resume or try to get yourself expertise in it. Hope this session was helpful. Uh, again, my LinkedIn handle is in front of you and also our American Association uh, link. 
it's also available in the description i would love to have a professional connection with you and uh, till we meet next time with some other concept uh, thanks for your time take care and have a good day